family. Saint Dominic de Guzman, bringing the light of Christ to everyone. Well, everyone, today in our church history class, I'm going to be telling you about the life of Saint Dominic de Guzman. So I've prepared a PowerPoint with photos and videos from my last trip to Spain. I visited the places where Saint Dominic lived. Can you turn out the lights? Saint Dominic was born in the town of Caleruega, Spain, around the year 1170. Look, these are some photos I took of the village. His parents were Don Felix de Guzman and Doña Juana de Aza. Father Michael, was his family rich? They were. They were Spanish nobles. But take a look at this. While I was there, I met a brother Ernesto. Hello, I'd like to introduce Brother Ernesto, a Dominican friar. Who better than him to tell us the story of his order's founder? Hello, children. What you can see here is a Dominican monastery. Did you know that St. Dominic was a good student just like you? When he was six, he was sent to live with his uncle to learn about literature. And when he was 14, he entered the University of Palencia to study theology. And he was such a good student that when he was 25, he was ordained a priest and named Professor of Holy Scripture. So as you see, St. Dominic was a good student. Was he a genius? Yes, Dominic was very intelligent. But he didn't fight in any wars. And he didn't do any miracles? <laughs> <laughs> As you'll soon see, at that time there were many wars between Muslims and Christians. The wars brought great devastation and the people went hungry because their crops had been ruined. He sold everything he had to raise money for the poor. And you say you're selling everything? Yes, everything except my books. I study them every day. Very well, I'll buy it. Please, Father Dominic, help me. My brother has been taken prisoner by the Muslims. They'll kill him. Don't worry. I'll sell myself as a slave. I'll offer myself in exchange for your brother. But, but, Father, you are... There's nothing more to be said. Very soon, the news spread all over Palencia, and people rallied to support Dominic. Everyone contributed money for the rescue. So he didn't have to be exchanged for the prisoner? Exactly. And many people shared what they had with the people who were most in need. Okay, we can continue the story tomorrow. Why did you call me? What have you got to show me? Look, what is that? A radio transmitter. Are you serious? Its maximum range is only a couple of miles, but that's enough for us to reach the whole neighborhood. That's great! We can have our very own radio station. And make our own programs. Excellent. We can start by making a program about the food at school. Right. We'll tell them to cut out the vegetables. Ugh, disgusting. And tell them to give us french fries instead. Okay, let's start the program. Did you hear what they said? Yeah, no more vegetables, we want fries instead. No, no more, more veggies, veggies. We, we want fries. fries. No, no more, more veggies, we want fries. Father Michael, we've started a radio show. I know. We've made a program about food at school. Yes, I heard it. We're gonna be famous. Yep, we're gonna be famous journalists. Hey, why don't you make a religious program? You could read from the Gospel every day. I don't think so. That wouldn't be any fun. What do we hate? Vegetables! vegetables. And what do we want? French fries now! No, no more, more veggies! We want fries! No more veggies! We want fries! No more veggies! We want fries! No more veggies! We want fries! Look, Sergio, they listen to us. Yeah, they heard us on the radio. We have to put a stop to this. Yes, we should take the radio transmitter away from them. Well, we could also talk to Alex and Sergio and ask them not to make that kind of program. Great. 
Let's continue the story of St. Dominic de Guzman. Please, could someone switch off the light? Brother Ernesto, is it true that St. Dominic was a great traveler? He was. Everything began when King Alfonso VIII asked the Bishop of Osma to travel to Denmark to ask a lady's hand in marriage on behalf of his son, Fernando. The Bishop asked St. Dominic to accompany him on his long journey, and the two set off for Denmark. Together, they traveled more than 800 miles, passing through many towns and villages. As they traveled through the south of France, Dominic saw that the Albigensian heresy was spreading fast. Father Michael, what was the Albigensian heresy? The Albigensians believed that all material things were sinful. Things like chocolate cake? Or playing basketball? <laughs> well, yes. They thought that only the things of the spirit were holy. That sounds boring. All material things are sinful. And Jesus Christ had a body, didn't he? So Jesus Christ cannot have been God, because everything to do with the flesh is evil. Wait a moment, that's not true. It's because Jesus Christ had a body that he sanctified the human body and all material things. He lived like an ordinary person. Ha! Huh, how can you, a priest, say such a thing? The things that God created are good. We can offer God a fine meal or our appreciation of a good book. And so Dominic realized that he had to teach these people about the true religion. And to do this, he founded the Order of Preachers, also known as the Dominicans. And do you know what St. Dominic did? He chose the very best teachers to instruct his friars, so that way they'd be well prepared to preach the truth. Later, one of his disciples was the greatest thinker in the history of the church, St. Thomas Aquinas. Paula? Yeah, I've got a cell phone. I bought it with my savings like you. Now we'll be able to talk all day. Since when have you had a cell phone? Why do you ask? Okay, okay. Sarah? My mom just came in. I'll call you back. Sarah, it's not good for you to be glued to the phone all day long. It's habit forming and it wastes time you could spend on other things. But mom, it's so much fun. Plus I can take photos and listen to my music. I know, but I think you should really only use it when you have to do errands and that's all. But mom, Besides, using your cell phone only when you need it is a sign of Christian simplicity, you know. Christian simplicity? Yes, the saints learn to do without material things. Right, it's just so boring. All the fun things are sinful. Well, that's not true. It is. The saints were all poor. They didn't have anything. They never ate. They never played. Hey, hey, you know that isn't true. I don't want to be like the saints. <laughs> Listen, the saints knew how to have fun and give thanks to God for the good things in life, but at the same time they were the masters of their own desires. They always tried to be above material things. Like Saint Dominic de Guzman who sold everything and gave it to the poor? That's right. He traveled the land preaching in villages, he walked barefoot and he didn't even have a house to sleep in. At night he prayed in the village churches. He spent all night praying, and sometimes he would fall asleep right there in the church. Sometimes he would be invited to a meal because he didn't have any food of his own. Thank you for inviting me into your home. You are very kind. Please eat, Father. Eat as much as you want. I only eat a single dish, never more. Well, in that case, at least have a drink. Just taste this extraordinary wine. You've never tasted its like before, I promise you. What are you doing? You've watered down the wine. Sir, I am very grateful for your hospitality. I thank you from the bottom of my heart, but I drink very little wine and I always mix it with water. It's a habit of mine. St. Dominic said to his followers, we have to talk with God or about God. He meant that we have to pray or do apostolate. That's what's important. And how can we do apostolate? Well, you have a very powerful tool. Do you mean our radio show? That's right. Listen, you could go to the Dominican monastery and speak to Friar Leopold. He'll help you to make a religious program. That sounds boring. You could do it as an interview. 
Hmm. I like the idea. We'll be the journalists and Friar Leopold will be our guest. Okay. A daily show. Very well. We can talk about the gospel every day. Okay. We'll broadcast at 6 in the evening. You can read from the gospels and we'll ask you questions. That sounds perfect. You know, I am a Dominican friar and my mission is preaching. So I think a program like yours is a great idea. Do you think that if St. Dominic de Guzman were alive today, he'd have a radio program? <laughs> I think it's very likely. Friar Leopold, did St. Dominic see visions? Yeah, many saints have seen our Lord or the Blessed Virgin. They have. In fact, one night when he was praying, he saw the Blessed Virgin Mary. The Blessed Virgin Mary appeared before him with a rosary in her hand and showed him how to pray it. My son, travel the world preaching devotion to the Holy Rosary. I promise you that many sinners will be converted and will receive abundant grace. The Blessed Virgin Mary told him that the Rosary was a powerful weapon. It does so much good. We already pray the Rosary. Yeah, but only three Hail Marys for each mystery, because we're just children. <laughs> I think that's fine. By the way, you could pray the Rosary in your program. I don't think that would be a good idea. Yeah, our friends would laugh at us. Ask God to make you as brave as St. Dominic and pray the rosary. Do not worry if your friends laugh at you. Hmm. Hmm. Hey, your radio show is excellent. Yeah, it's really funny. Thanks. I like the Friar Leopold program. You do? Yeah, I do. So what? No, nothing, nothing. Where'd you find that friar? He's really interesting. He's a Dominican monk. I want to congratulate Alex and Sergio for the daily program about the Gospels. I think it's great that you're using your transmitter to do some good. Congratulations, boys. Sarah, Paula, what are you doing? Nothing. Nothing? Let me see. Are you using your cell phones? Well, I... I don't have any choice but to take away your phones. You know you're not allowed to use them in class. Oh, but please! We promised to put them away and not get them out again, honestly! I'm sorry. You should have thought about that earlier. Keep them in my office until your parents come to pick them up. I see that we have more children than ever this Sunday. I imagine it's because of Friar Leopold's program. I'm very happy that you like it and that you're learning. You know, St. Dominic was a great missionary, but he said, first contemplate and then teach. That means, to do apostolate and draw our friends closer to God, first we have to be full of God ourselves, and we can achieve this by praying. The apostolate is like a glass of water that overflows and spills onto everything around it. First you have to fill up the glass with God. When St. Dominic walked past a monastery and heard the bells, he stopped and joined the monks in prayer. And so, when we walk past a Catholic church, we can go in and tell our Lord that we love Him, because He's there, in the tabernacle. St. Dominic also said that we should read part of the Gospels every day. That's what Friar Leopold does each day on his program. Guess what? I've decided to pray a while every day to fill myself up with God like that glass. Okay, I want to do that too. Martin's moving forward with a ball. Fran steps up and it's a personal foul. That's two free throws for Martin. This is getting exciting, don't you think? You're not wrong about that. If Martin makes these, he'll be our tournament champion. Hey, 
Hey, Sergio, look at that. Who are they? No idea. I bet they're policemen. Quick, hide the transmitter. Are you Alex and Sergio? Depends. Alex, people only say that in the movies. I'm gonna ask you again. Are you the boys with the radio transmitter? Please, officers, don't take away our transmitter. We're not doing anything bad, honestly. <laughs> Why are you laughing? We're from the local radio station. We want to sign you up to do a religious program every week. It'll be a show for children. And don't forget to bring Friar Leopold. We love his program. Did you hear that? I don't believe it! A program on local radio! It's not fair! You deserved it. I warned you. Will you collect the cell phone? Yes, I'll go get the phone. But I'm going to keep it for a week. Mom! Sarah! Nicholas! Your attention, please! Have you heard the news? By the looks on your faces, I guess it's something good. They want us to do a program on the local radio station. Really? Yes, we'll be doing it with Friar Leopold. We'll be famous and people will ask for autographs. And we'll travel to conferences all over the world. Okay, okay, it's not that exciting. You're just saying that because you're envious. Envious? You must be joking. What's up with her? She's upset because she can't use her phone for a week. Well, today I'm going to finish telling the story of St. Dominic de Guzman. Brother Ernesto, can you tell us how St. Dominic died? Well, you see, Father Michael, St. Dominic died on August 6, 1221, when he was 51 years old. He was very, very tired. Well, it's not surprising, after a life spent traveling and preaching. That's right. He died in Bologna, Italy, where his remains are to this day. He was canonized by his great friend and admirer, Pope Gregory IX. Well, in fact, the Pope said, I no more doubt the saintliness of this man than I do that of St. Peter and St. Paul. Wow. You know, Sister Patricia, we haven't had our cell phones for a few days and we're fine about it. Of course. I think we passed the test. <laughs> well, of course. I'm very happy. You know, your attitude is very pleasing to God. It's a little act of poverty. Like the saints? Exactly. Many saints offered their poverty in exchange for the conversion of those who didn't love God. Well, we are offering our little sacrifice for those who don't believe in God. Right. That way we'll be missionaries, just like St. Dominic de Guzman. Now, friends, we'll end our program by praying three Hail Marys. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus.